Uh, hello and welcome to this session on uh, congenital coxa vera. So uh, let's start off with what is congenital coxa vera. It is a developmental abnormality which is characterized by a primary cartilaginous defect in the femoral neck. It is also having an abnormal decrease in the neck shaft angle and that is why it is known as a coxa vera. Along with this, we can see shortening of the femoral neck, relative overgrowth of the greater trochanter, and a shortening of the affected lower limb. Now, congenital coxa vera is a very rare condition. There are no racial predilections and no sex predilections. However, in bilateral cases, it is always important that we rule out skeletal dysplasias. The skeletal dysplasias we need to rule out are cledocranial dysostosis, metaphyseal dysostosis, and spondylometaphyseal dysplasia. Other uncommon dysplasias can also be seen. Causes of acquired coxa vera. Now, the most common cause of acquired coxa vera is SCFE. Other causes, which could be a sequelae of avascular necrosis of the femoral epiphysis. Now, this is an end result of AVN and it could be due to a variety of conditions like Perthes disease, a traumatic coxa vera causing a femoral neck fracture or a traumatic hip dislocation. There could be a sequelae for a reduction of DDH which was forcibly reduced leading to AVN. It could be a sequelae of septic, a septic necrosis of the femoral head or septic arthritis sequelae and other rare causes of AVN of the immature femoral head. And lastly, coxa vera can also be associated with pathological bone disorders like osteogenesis imperfecta, fibrous dysplasia, renal osteodystrophy, osteopetrosis, and other bone softening conditions affecting the femoral neck. These conditions also are known to give a shepherd crook deformity. Coming to the clinical features, the clinical features often do not manifest until after the birth and usually not until the walking age. Now, the most common clinical feature with, of presentation is a painless limp. This is often a Trendelenburg gait and in bilateral conditions, a waddling gait can be seen. As the child grows, limb length inequality can also be seen. Because of this Trendelenburg lurch and the leg length, in, uh, leg length inequality, there is easy fatigability and there is a pain which is noticed around the gluteal muscles. So children often find it difficult to keep up with their peers when they are having this deformity. The physical examination, there is a restriction of abduction and internal rotation. The tip of the greater trochanter is proximally migrated. The Trendelenburg test is positive. There is no telescopy of the hip or other signs of instability. There is shortening present in unilateral cases. And there could be an evidence of skeletal dysplasia. Now, if you see here, the abduction is limited because the arc present over here is very small and hence the abduction is limited. The, greater, the tip of the greater trochanter, the tip is at a higher level compared to the femoral neck because of which you are obviously going to have a Trendelenburg test which is positive. Now there is no telescopy seen here because the femoral head is within the acetabulum and it is giving us a stable joint and hence no telescopy will be seen. So, and the shortening is present only in unilateral cases because the other hip is normal. Now coming to the radiographic measurements, first we have the neck shaft angle which is the angle drawn between the long axis of the shaft of the femur and the long axis of the femoral neck. Now this gives us an idea about the diagnosis of a coxa vera. Here we can see that in children, this angle is 
150 degrees at birth and it gradually decreases to 120 in adulthood. This range in adults is between 120 and 135 degrees. Anything less than 120 degrees is considered abnormal and is termed as coxa vara. The next angle is the head shaft angle. Now if you notice, even in this severe deformity on the radiograph, the neck shaft angle in this particular radiograph is more than 120 degrees. Whereas the head shaft angle which is drawn between the physis and the long axis of the femoral shaft is almost parallel. So this angle is around 170 to 180 degrees which shows us the correct magnitude of the deformity compared to the neck shaft angle. The next angle is the Hilgenrener epiphyseal angle. Now this angle is drawn between two lines. The first line is the Hilgenrener's line which is drawn as a horizontal between the two triradiate cartilages and the second line is on the epiphysis. The normal angle is 0 to 25 degrees with the mean around 16 degrees. So this angle is also prognostic because if the HE angle is less than 45 degrees then these hips can be observed as the risk of progression is quite low. If the Hilgenrener epiphyseal angle is more than 60 degrees they require surgical intervention. Whereas the gap in between 45 to 60 degrees, these children require a close observation and in case they are developing any symptoms and physical disability, then they need to undergo surgical intervention. So a close follow-up for children with the HE angle between 45 to 60 as long as they are asymptomatic. The moment they get symptomatic, or the angle goes for more than 60 degrees, they need to undergo surgical intervention. Right. So now coming to the pathophysiology, the pathophysiology is largely unknown, but the best known pathophysiology is due to a primary defect in the enchondral ossification of the medial part of the femoral neck. This medial part of the femoral neck has large amounts of fibrous tissue rather than cancellous bone. And this fibrous tissue is mechanically weak. So under the loads of body weight, as well as the muscular forces, this medial capital femoral epiphysis, which is mechanically weak, it undergoes deformation and leads to a coxa vera deformity. As you can see here, the compressile forces are joint reaction forces and they are almost perpendicular to the physis. If you see, this is the medial portion of the femoral neck. This medial portion of the femoral neck is weak in congenital coxa vara. And when the compressile forces pass through this weak portion, it bends and that bending gives rise to a coxa vera deformity. So coming to the treatment goals of congenital coxa vera, the goal is to stimulate ossification and healing of the defective femoral neck. To restore the femoral head shaft angle to normal and to restore the normal mechanical function to the hip abductors. This treatment is indicated for patients with a Hilgenrener epiphyseal angle of more than 60 degrees, who have a symptomatic limp, a Trendelenburg gait, or who have progressive deformities. <music>